coming up on this episode. What are government securities? Investment products which are issued by government. Where can I get access to these bonds and how do I invest? Yes, you must have interest in that area. What, what, is that, what are the risks that are involved in investing in government securities? Yeah. The government has guaranteed your principal. You get your money back. You get your money back. You get your money back. 10%, 12%, 13 I mean, please. If you want uh, to do well in life, diversify. Uh, conveniency and, and, and knowledge. Isifa Investment Show, sponsored by Standard Investment Bank. Hello and welcome to this show. You are watching the Isifa Investment Show, where we showcase different investment products and also introduce you to professionals that you didn't even know existed, but will be available to help you in your investment journey. My name is Rina Hicks. I'm the Operations Director at FIDA Investment Bank, and I like to call myself a personal finance enthusiast and so i create content as well which is what i'm doing here and i'll be your sh your host in this show now did you know that we have five different asset classes five main ones and asset classes are just groupings of assets you know you just put them in a group and they're in a group because they exhibit similar characteristics and are you know under similar laws or regulated in a similar way so we have cash and cash like assets we have fixed income investments we have equities we have real estate and then everything else that doesn't fall under that under those are called alternative investments today we are looking at fixed income investments and specifically government securities i am so glad today because i'm joined by anthony mwithiga anthony mwithiga is the chief executive officer of absa asset management kenya limited he has been in the investment management industry for the last 21 years guys we are in safe hands he is so experienced and will be able to help us understand what are these government securities how can i use them i'm a 20 something 30 something year old why should i even bother investing in things like these listen this is a great opportunity to learn from somebody who's been in the market for a very long time. Karibu sana, Anthony. Thank you. Thank you, Rina. Welcome to the show. I'm glad and to be here. And we are so excited to, to hear from you this, uh, this day. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Yes. So maybe we can start from the beginning. Yeah. What are government securities? Yes, thanks, Rina. Uh, so government securities, as you earlier mentioned, uh, belong to the group of investments we call fixed income securities. So specifically government uh, securities uh, are investment products which are issued by government and they pay interest as a form of return and they are available both to individual investors and institutional investors. They are grouped into two. So government securities, we have treasury bills which are shorter in terms of their time to maturity, either three months, six months or 365 days. And then we have treasury bonds which are slightly longer dated uh, uh, fixed income securities and uh, treasury bonds can in Kenya can be uh, can take up to one up to 30 years to mature and we have a number of them issued by governments over the government of Kenya over over the time and within themselves again there might be some called uh, infrastructure bonds mm -hmm. and others just normal bonds and the difference is 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 sometimes their maturity periods and and how the income or interest is treated in terms of taxes. Mm. Yep. You know, one of the times that I've spoken to young people about investing in bonds, they're just like, uh, by the way, 10%, 12%, 13%, I mean, please. Yeah. Why should I bother investing in bonds when I'm a young person? I'll wait until I'm a grandparent yeah. uh, and I have nothing else to do and I can't take any risk. That's when I'll invest in government securities or in treasury bonds. Yeah. What, what, what would you say to somebody like that? Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a common um, kind of perception, especially for the younger investors or, or, or young professionals or investors. But uh, there are type of investments which for anyone, young or old, they have a special space in your overall investment portfolio. And the reason why the returns are not uh, those high double digit numbers is because they also carry a low risk uh, uh, profile in terms of the, uh, the certainty in, in, in getting your principal back and the 
interest payment which comes every six months. And uh, that low risk uh, makes them pay uh, not higher returns which we might achieve in other investments like, like shares. But uh, given what we call in investment management risk return trade-off, mm -hmm. in Kenya the returns rates or yields of government securities are actually not that bad because mm -hmm. uh, they range between 7% and as high as to 14%. And that for, all, for a risk-free investment is actually a good asset because you will have other monies to invest in more high return and high risk investments. So they are needed by everyone, whether young or old. You know, it's interesting you say that. When you actually look at that risk return trade-off, which is yeah. usually just a, a graph yeah. and a curve that shows the lower the risk, the, high, the lower the return, the higher the risk, the higher the return. Yeah. But for a 13, 14% return yeah. and having almost no risk, you know, very low risk, yeah. you know, you're guaranteed you get your money back from the government. Um, you, you, you find that government bonds in Kenya are actually don't quite fit that, yeah. that trade-off in, in an exact way because it's quite high, almost, yeah. almost as high as some equities. Exactly. Yeah, which is very interesting. Yeah, yeah. you wanted to say something? Yeah, it's, it's true. Uh, sometimes we feel these rates or yields or rates of return from government securities look slightly higher than normal because globally, tr uh, government treasury securities or bonds or treasury bills carry very low returns, mm. others even negative. But locally, there are factors which make them behave that way. And there are two factors mainly, okay. actually three. One, of course, is uh, we're in a slightly higher inflationary environment. So inflation in Kenya is always above 5%, currently close to 7%. And, um, and, and that has an effect into the rates which we see from these government securities. And then secondly, uh, these government securities uh, in Kenya, there's, um, there's, there's, there's good demand for them. Uh, and also, uh, they are, they're extremely popular by both retail and institutional investors. And thirdly, um, they are, they, they, there, is a, there is a continuous appetite for local borrowing by government, uh, which, which issues bonds and treasury bills to fund their local borrowing programs. And by that, government needs to incentivize me and you and any other investor to pay a slightly higher return for us to give them their money to run their programs. And that's why the returns seem slightly better from a risk return trade-off. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes these, as you rightly say, treasury bonds returns sometimes challenge uh, other investments like, like investment in stocks and shares. Yeah. 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 So, so for somebody who's listening to this and is like, what, I didn't know I can get 12, I didn't know I can get 13% investing in bonds and consistently, yeah. where can I get access to these bonds and how do I invest? Yeah, so first and foremost, actually investing in government securities is a very open public uh, uh, initiative by government. That means uh, anyone is eligible uh, because for two reasons, one, the amount as minimum investment amounts are quite low, as low as 50,000 shillings. And secondly, the, the main uh, issuer of government securities in Kenya, who is a central bank, have, have provided the, the avenue for, for us to walk in and actually buy them. Mm -hmm. But because we are scattered all over the country, uh, not everyone is, is able to walk to central bank, uh, open an account, fill a form, and buy government bonds. There are other agents of the government of Kenya through Central Bank who were able to do that. And these, are, these can be investment banks, uh, even stock brokers, uh, commercial banks themselves, mm. um, institutions like uh, fund managers or asset managers, for example, where I work. Um, and, and these are able to facilitate investors, uh, both retail and institutional, to invest in government securities or government bonds and bills. So it's, it's, it's very convenient. Uh, you can also invest in these securities indirectly okay. uh, by investing in, uh, in unit trusts which, 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 which invest in these securities. So you can invest in a unit trust uh, bond fund or in a unit trust money market fund to achieve investments in treasury bills. Mm. So the ways of accessing these securities or these government securities and bonds, it's, it's, it's very, it's, it's, the, the opportunity is very wide. And I think uh, everyone has a chance to, to enjoy the return at, at a, at a risk-free rate. Okay. Yeah. Why would somebody choose to invest in a, a collective investment scheme or unit trust yeah. uh, in bonds versus going directly to 
the CBK or to the same organization and applying directly for the bond? Yeah, so we, that's a good question. Um, so the main reason why people sometimes need to invest through uh, an agent, a third party, or a financial institution, or a unit trust uh, fund is, is because of two main reasons, uh, convenience and, and, and knowledge. You see, there, is an, there are very many bonds out there issued by the government of Kenya, and they are issued monthly, yeah. sometimes two of them per month. Mm -hmm. Um, the average layperson on the street, uh, financially literate or not, might not be in a, uh, capable of making the right decision in terms of which bond to buy yeah. at what time and at what rate or yield or return. Because uh, these bonds are sold through an auction. That means everyone places a bid based on their knowledge or information they have, and not everyone is able to do that. So. The main advantage of, 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 of going through, for example, uh, inter financial sector intermediaries like investment banks or fund managers or asset managers or even commercial banks, uh, it's because that knowledge is within those institutions. They will listen to you, they will tell you this bond is available at this particular time, this is the price of the bond. If the bond is already existing, if it's a new bond, they will tell you this is the likely rate of return, so we encourage you to bid at this level or at this rate, um, and, and, and you get the knowledge. And this knowledge is available for, luckily in Kenya, for free. <laughs> so so we, we should take advantage. Um, on the unit trust side, uh, why people are keen about investing in these bonds, uh, in investing in government securities through that channel, is again because of two main reasons. Apart from the knowledge, because unit trusts are actively managed by seasoned investment professionals who know when to buy, when to sell, which bonds to buy, which bonds to sell, and to, to hold them for how long. Yeah. The other thing is, is, <clears throat> is liquidity. Um, remember these bonds have maturity periods as low as maybe one year and as high as 30 years. So, and these bonds are tradable. That means you can sell and get your money back. Mm. But not sometimes all bonds are easy to sell and get your money back as, as we might expect. So in Unitrust, even if you've invested in a Unitrust bond fund, which, 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 well, or you invest in a unit trust fund, which invests in government securities, you can get your money back as per the rules of the unit trust. That means between one and three days for most of the, of the providers, okay. regardless of the ma maturity period or tenor of the bonds which that unit trust fund is carrying. So it's convenience, uh, easy of exit or liquidity, and thirdly, uh, um, professional management yeah. and, and, and knowledge. Okay, yeah. interesting. Yeah. So we've said all these wonderful things about bonds. Yeah. Um, but is there a risk, you know? What, what, is that, what are the risks that are involved in investing in government securities? Yeah, that, that's, that's a very good question, uh, uh, Rina. And, and you know, we, we call these securities risk-free. Mm. So just for clarity purposes, the risk-free of government securities, treasury bills and treasury bonds, is as to the extent of the inability of government to default. That means the government has guaranteed your principal. You get your money back. You get your money back. You get your money back. I know sometimes there's nervousness about that, mm -hmm. given how uh, different governments all over the world operate. But to a large, to, to a large extent, governments globally, including our own government, are able to and will be able to pay back our principal sums when the, the bonds or the treasury bills mature. And it's because for two simple reasons. One, mm -hmm. one they, they use, the, as much as a government is able to continue effectively collecting taxes, uh, it can pay its, its debt obligations, including government securities. And secondly, uh, governments also s recycle these bonds. That means when you are investing, there are others who are divesting. So the ones who are investing are also... Divesting, sorry, for those who... So, yeah, so, <laughs> so divesting means you are selling your investment. You are, you are, you, you are exiting from the investment. Yeah. So when your bond, treasury bond matures and you want, you, want, you want your money back, the government at the same time, every month, is issuing another bond. That means getting more money for its programs, and still to pay the ones who need their money back. So that system assures 
uh, investors mm -hmm. of 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 the zero likelihood of default regardless of 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 all the fears we we hear about government's indebtedness and level of debt so that's that's the assurance investors have and we we we, we continue to believe that because we don't have a history, for example, in this country of, 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 of defaults of government securities. Mm. And that's why there's huge confidence in these investments. So this, this, the, the, the only type of risk we might identify uh, from investing in government bonds um, is, is associated with liquidity. Because you've said the likelihood of default of not getting our money back is non-existent or negligible. Now, the only risk we see is uh, is in two ways. One is liquidity, and by liquidity I mean sometimes inability to get your money back from an existing bond which has not matured, and you are an investor, but you are, for example, you had bought a 10-year bond, two, three years later, you, you, you want your money back for certain reasons, or personal or otherwise, and you would wish to sell that bond so that you get your money back. Because government of Kenya treasury bonds are, are tradable at, 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 at the local Nairobi Securities Exchange. Now, the delay in getting a buyer for, you, for, for your bond, uh, we, we, we attach some risk to it. Mm -hmm. Because it, it's, it just shows that you're not able to get your money back at the time you want. Uh, and, it, and it's because you, would, you don't want to obey the maturity period of the bond, you want to come out yeah, earlier. Yeah. So you are financial advisor, uh, investment bank, commercial bank, fund manager, asset manager, or stock broker, is he or she is trying to make an effort to look for a buyer for you so that you get out. Mm -hmm. That extended period where you don't get a buyer brings what we call a liquidity risk. Associated to that, it's good to realize that the treasury bonds in Kenya are listed at the Nairobi Securities Exchange. Mm. And by being listed, their prices can go up and down depending on what we technically call the direction of interest rates, more technically term structure of interest mm. rates. Now when interest rates go up, bonds values or valuations go down. And those ups and downs of interest rates creates a bit of value volatility in your existing bond investment. Now, that is, is, is a risk which is more apparent to investors who are likely to sell before maturity mm -hmm. or have requirements, regulatory or otherwise, to continue what we call marking their investments on their bond market. But if you are, you are an investor who buys and holds until maturity, you can ignore that risk because you continue getting your interest income through what we call coupon interest every six months yeah. and you get your full principal end of the term. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and that risk is, 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 is only a, a perceived or materializes to particular type of investors who keep, who keep trying to mark or price their bonds uh, to the market movements uh, at, 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 at the Nairobi Securities Exchange where those bonds are listed. Yeah. You know, what you've just said actually emphasizes the importance of using a professional. Yeah. Even if you're going directly yeah. and bidding directly, yeah. you need to know how is the demand for this bond? You know, how, how, where are people bidding at? Is there excitement about this bond or is there none? Because you can get into a bond that then has no liquidity, you're trying to sell, you can't, or then you're in an environment where um, interest rates go up and are uh, anticipated to go up in the near future, yeah. which then messes you up. If you're looking to sell the bond within you know, a year or so, so the very, very important. Yeah, yeah thank yeah, you for, for yeah, sharing those yeah, risks. Yeah. The demand Some of is which are not important. So obvious. Yeah, hmm? yeah the, de the demand for a particular bond is, is very important. And one of the good uh, examples of demand we've seen for bonds is, uh, is bonds which are. are are tax-free. I mean, you don't pay withholding tax on those bonds. And these, in Kenya, commonly are called infrastructure bonds. These bonds, we don't pay uh, withholding taxes on them. We get our interest income from those bonds uh, at, at gross. And they are popular, and, and whether they are being issued for the first time, which we call it the primary auction, or being traded after 
being available in the market, we call it in the secondary market, they are still very popular. So uh, exit before they mature or selling before they mature is also easy because there's demand for the bond. Sure. More investors want that investment. Maybe they didn't get a chance to buy the bond when it was initially issued by the government of Kenya. Now, we encourage individual investors, young and old, to, to focus on, on bonds which are more popular, they are, they, are, they are in high demand, and, and any time you want your money back and you ask your financial advisor, a commercial bank, investment bank, a asset manager or fund manager to sell it for you, they will do it in a, in, in a, in a faster and a better price mm. than other bonds which might take a longer time. Longer time. Yeah. So for somebody who's a retailer like me, <laughs> yeah. deciding to invest in bonds, yeah. the infrastructure bonds are a good place to start. They're very good for those two reasons. Mm. They're extremely liquid and you get uh, a tax exemption mm. f from, from the income you earn from that bond. And they're very popular. I can tell you they are popular to the extent of being used as a consistent source of income, even for people who have left formal employment and they have put all their savings there. Mm. Because you get a consistent stream of income and if you want your principal back, you can easily sell the bond and get your money out. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much. Before I let you go, yeah. I want to take a question from the audience. Yeah. So we'll do that right away. So the question here is, what are the pros or the advantages of investing in government securities? Yeah. You've yeah. touched on a few yeah. of them. But maybe we can just sort of summarize what, yeah. what are those yeah. advantages? I mean, I think the key advantages are three. One of them is safety. The fact that uh, these investments carry an implied risk-free uh, aspect, that's a huge advantage. That means the likelihood of losing your principal amount and interest income is non-existent or negligible. Mm -hmm. And everyone likes safety. Um, and sometimes we even sacrifice uh, safety for return. Mm. Uh, the second one is um, from a risk adjusted point of view, the returns are, are good. They are. they are good. I mean, um, uh, government securities, whether treasury bills or treasury bonds, their, their returns can range from 7% up to 14%, depending on which tenor or which type of bond or treasury bill you buy. It's, it's, it's a good rate of return for an investment which has no risk. Thirdly is liquidity. Mm. These are investments we can exit at, at, as, as fast as we wish, especially if we have the right instrument compared to other investments, for example, like, like property or real estate mm. and other alternative investments. So the fact that we can get our money back by selling the investment, uh, these investments are also a liquid advantage. They can, they can meet our unexpected emergency needs of money. And, and for that reason, I would encourage uh, uh, both young and old to, to, to allocate part of their savings or the investment portfolio in government securities. Yeah. yeah. I have one more. There's a client who mm. actually used their bond to borrow money yeah. from the bank uh, to buy an asset. Oh, sure. So it, it's a, it can be used exactly. as security. Yeah? Exactly. That's, a, the, 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 that's an extra point and, and a very good one. They are very popular as, 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 as a source of collateral. So a treasury bond investment can be used, as you rightly say, as security or collateral to borrow from a financial institution like a bank. Mm. And, and, and banks view these investments favorably than any other forms of securities we know. Mm. Yeah, so that's an extra advantage, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much for yeah. taking the time to come yeah. and to explain to us more about government securities. The risks, I hadn't actually seen them in that way. I think the key risk for me was interest rates moving. But yeah, there's also liquidity yeah. um, as a risk uh, that I hadn't quite seen uh, the way that you had uh, explained it. So thank you so much for coming. Um, how do people get in touch with the, the asset management company if, at ABSA? If yes, you? yes. And thank you. Thank you, Rina, for that. So ABSA Asset Management, um, we, we, we are one of the newest and, and fast growing asset managers in Kenya. Uh, we manage investments for individual institutions. Uh, we, we, we offer these services to pension funds, uh, insurance companies, and we also have unit trust investment for the, for the mass market public. 
we are of course uh, very active in, 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 in social media. Uh, we are located uh, in Nairobi and Waiyaki Way, but uh, our services and products are available throughout the APSA Bank uh, branch network across the country. And, um, and um, I'm also personally reachable uh, through my uh, social media handles and, 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 and addresses. Mm. Thank you. Fantastic. And yeah. there you have it, guys. Government securities. No more excuses. Save up that money. Get to at least 50000 and you can begin to invest in government securities. If you have any more questions, please do share them and we'll be sure to answer them. Next up, we meet your FA. We are looking at those financial advisors and analysts and people who've been in the investment industry for years and years and years, just to hear how they've been able to, to succeed in their career, how they began their stories. It's an inspirational segment. So keep watching and subscribe. You are distinctive, you are esteemed, you are remarkable, you are exceptional, and so should be your investment. Standard Investment Bank Limited is licensed and regulated by the Capital Markets Authority as a first online forex trading money manager trading as Mansa X. With Mansa X, you enjoy investment diversification away from traditional asset classes. It is highly liquid enabling you to access funds at any time with minimal loss of value. Our expertise is unmatched, spanning over 20 years. Invest with Mansa X today, Kenya's first and only regulated online forex trading money manager. The first time I heard about shares was when my dad uh, was, was talking with another friend of his to buy sh some shares. I didn't know that was, uh, was in primary school. And uh, later, of course, I learned that they were buying shares in ICDC. And uh, I got interested. So over the years, I, my interest in stocks, shares uh, started rising. Many, many years later, uh, I had even an opportunity to uh, do an MBA and the dissertation happened to be the uh, focused on the NSC. <laughs> that was uh, something very interesting. Now, uh, I joined the uh, NSC uh, through a kind of, uh, not in a very planned way, but I actually just found myself there. Uh, the, the NSC then was an association of stockbrokers. There were actually six stockbrokers. And uh, uh, one, uh, uh, the organization I worked for then was provided secretarial and administrative services to that association. It was, of course, these days is called Ernest and Young, and they had a, a secretary arm called Africa Registrars Limited. And uh, Africa Registrars Limited wanted to employ somebody to learn uh, as an assistant manager in that department because they were planning that the manager was leaving shortly. So I was actually uh, uh, headhunted from wherever I was working and I went to learn Africa Registrars Limited. And uh, guess what? The first file I dealt with was Nairobi Stock Exchange uh, Association. That was the, one of the first files to deal with. It was a busy file, but uh, because they used to have sessions on a weekly basis uh, at the, uh, the Stanley Hotel, where every week uh, they would meet together over what they were calling a call of a session, where they would call the prices that have been dealt over, over the week, buying and selling by the various stockbrokers over the counter, and then they would record this, and this would become uh, the, you know, the record for the week. And the Africa Registrars Limited, which was, I, I was then learning, uh, that is between 1987 to 1990, uh, I was doing the recording uh, of that. And that's naturally how I, uh, I ended up now becoming more and more in, interested in matters of the stock market. Uh, 
the most, in, in my view, there are a number of uh, things that one requires to consider. The first one, I think, is you must have interest in that area. It is an area that you, there's so much to learn. And if you are not, you don't have, it's not a job like any other. Because a lot of jobs, you come and learn a particular thing and learn with it. Uh, in the capital markets industry, uh, the financial sector generally, it is a never learning situation. You, you can never know enough. Even after I have been in the industry for, for 30 years now, uh, because uh, as I said, since 1987, uh, that is 34 years. Uh, I st every day I learn something new, every day. So for a young person who is joining, please have interest. If you have to have an impact, you must know. You, have, have, you must have enough knowledge. And no, knowledge comes by learning and leading and uh, hearing what people are saying, attending seminars, workshops. Uh, what I have not said is that between 1989 and uh, when I left the NSC in 1999, I, I attended more than possibly 50 courses over, over that period. Uh, you know, some short, some, some uh, letter to the logger. And uh, it was all learning. I, I attended many financial markets across the globe, uh, from London to Johannesburg, Malaysia, to uh, Chicago, to um, Nasdaq in Washington, D.C., New York Stock Exchange. It was across, and you, you could not be able to get all this knowledge without getting interested. You had to get interested in all these things. So that is the first thing. The other thing is that you must have, a, if, if I put it this way, a mindset that is not uh, get quick, uh, get rich quick mentality. Uh, uh, because it, that, is, uh, that should be left to the people doing what the, in Kenya the, the, uh, we call to tenda. Eh? Uh, uh, those, those people who look for quick money. There's no quick money in the financial sector, by the way. A lot of people assume there's money because you are dealing in the finance, they assume there's quick money. The, a young man should lo, know that it's slow but steady growth that matters within the financial service sector. So the mindset must be one of wanting to do a good job based on fundamentals, uh, uh, growth that is steady because even if you take for example growth in terms of investments uh, it can come very quickly but it can also be very slow uh, you remember uh, compound, compound interest compound is incremental you build something on something on something on something that incremental growth is what a lot of young people don't appreciate Well, let me put it this way. Isifa is, uh, I've seen Isifa grow from, because the first, the, the first, uh, uh, the, you know, syllabus, if I may put, or curricula for Isifa, was actually drawn in my office. Uh, so, <laughs> so I have seen it from where it came. In fact, uh, when the decision was made by the board of the NSC that they needed to create a professional body that would support the industry, and this came because uh, uh, there was some mention that we needed to, f what I would call, professionalize the industry, make it more, uh, f you know, uh, based on, uh, uh, on knowledge and skills and good uh, practice. Uh, so the board of the NSC uh, agreed that they needed to support that process. And uh, they employed a consultant uh, who I had to give an office next to my office uh, to work from. So after every few minutes, he would call me, uh, Job, what do you think? So for the next one month, I was part of the development of the curricula. <laughs> so it, it was actually, I have seen it from the, uh, from the word go. And uh, it has grown to be what it is over the years, and I don't want to go into a lot of details uh, until 2015, when it was formalized through 
uh, you know, through an act, uh, Investment Financial uh, Analyst uh, Act. And uh, I would say that because my mindset was already attuned to a professional way of doing things, uh, ISIFA became just reinforced what I believed in. Because uh, I do, uh, I have just explained that I did my dissertation on matters to do with the growth of the market. So already my mindset was a, was attuned to that kind of thing. So ISIFA was part and parcel of that pr whole ecosystem for me, and therefore, uh, as far as I'm concerned, ISIFA is a, 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 me and ISIFA. Uh, are inseparable, if you want to put it that way, because I was there when it was created and have grown to where it is now. And uh, even now that I'm out of the council, uh, I still feel part and parcel of it. It's not something that you can walk away from uh, any day. So ISIFA has been fundamental to what I do. Thank you. One of the things that I've always loved is nature. <clears throat> I, uh, and I don't think, I, I grew up in an area that was very close to a forest. So uh, from very early ages, I got very close to nature. Yeah, I was, there was, a, for example, a stream that passed near our place, which had very clean water. Uh, you know, and totally unpolluted. You could literally go out there and scoop very clear water and take it straight from the river. Um, the river also had even fish. So very early we started uh, fishing, uh, uh, you know. Uh, when I was even at below seven, I knew how to fish from the river. And uh, it was very, very fresh. Uh, so I have grown very close to nature. So one of the first thing, one of the things that I do as naturally is I like to see animals, I like to see uh, birds, I like to see. So I I, re I really take time sometimes alone, yeah, being out there in the in the bushes and uh, and I, I not too far from Nairobi I have a, a small farm where. Uh, there are trees and birds and that kind of thing. So I, I like to go and see even, even the small goats growing and the chicken growing. The wild, you know, the Kienjaji type that grew out in the That is the kind of life I enjoy. Um, from the point of view of uh, investments and even from the point of view of life, one of the things that, uh, there's, there's a book in the Bible called Ecclesiastes, and it's a difficult name. If you read chapter 11 and chapter 12, you'll find something very interesting. For example, in chapter 11 and verse 6, I believe, I can't recall exactly, they talk about the principle of diversification. And it's very, very interesting, because risk, if you want uh, to do well in life, diversify. It requires, um, in, uh, as far as investments are concerned. So diversification is a principle that is very important. Don't put all your eggs, and we know that, into one basket. Number two, if, and I believe it's chapter 12, verse 1, that remember you are creator in the days of your youth. That is something you can expand that into a lot of aspects of life. Even in investment, don't wait until uh, you are 50 or 60 or 70. Do it when you are young. Do, uh, remember uh, to invest in yourself, to invest in other people, to invest in God when you are still young. Because the, the same verse continues to say, because there are days who come when you say you have no interest. Uh, actually, the way it puts it says that you find that you have no enjoyment in those things. So, you, while there's so much you can, I have read so much about quotes and quotes, I've read books about uh, investments. Uh, one of the code books I used to read is called The Richest Man in Babylon um, by George S. Cannon, I think, uh, which is a very old book. But the principles are sound. Eh? Uh, they remain as good as they were 30, 40 years ago. 
uh, as they are today. And uh, they were, they are, if you, I, I, I can't remember a, a specific, you know, quote that uh, stands out, but they are a combination of so many, because there's so much there that is written about investments, about uh, financial wealth. There's so much that is written. guys thank you so much for watching please subscribe subscribe hit that button that red one written subscribe in white and then share the video and keep watching we have lots of fantastic content and professionals coming right up on this channel the isifa investment show take care bye next week on the show we discuss investing in collective investment schemes with fa elizabeth irungu Investment Show, sponsored by Standard Investment Bank.